Yeah, I think the first thing I would like to see is those individuals um, that have part partaken in these uh, peaceful protests or uh, been out protesting, uh, and particularly if they're in metropolitan areas that really haven't controlled the outbreak to the extent we want. Minneapolis happens to be one was still having significant transmission. DC is another one. Uh, we really want those individuals to highly consider uh, being evaluated and get tested uh, uh, and obviously go from there. Uh, because I do think there is a potential, unfortunately, for this to be a seeding event. And the way to minimize that is to have each individual to recognize it's uh, to the advantage of them to protect their loved ones to, hey, I was out, I need, uh, I need to go get tested, you know, in, in three, five, seven days, go get tested, make sure you're not infected. All right, well, I don't think you answered that question, but, uh, you know, the question was, what, what are you advising the states if they're overwhelmed and they don't have the contact tracers? Yeah, I, I want to work with the states so they don't get to that pace. I agree with uh, Tom Friedman. We need to build that workforce, and they need to work with us uh, now to make sure they have the, they're overprepared. Uh, this is not an area that you need to skimp and be underprepared. This is a time to be overprepared. And if you hire extra contact tracers, then you can use them to help with our HIV elimination program or vaccination program or maternal child health program. But this is not a time to be under, understaffed. Let me show you this photograph. This is the Lake of Ozarks. I, yeah, I had the same visceral response, Dr. Redfield. Uh, look at this. Look at these folks. This is unbelievable. And you've got this happened in the state of Missouri. The White House, White House guidance says that states need to have the ability to trace the contacts of COVID and results. The state of Missouri, where this has happened, does not have the capacity to do contact tra tracing. Is the CDC tracing everyone who was there? Yes or no, Dr. Redfield? It would be the state, and we would assist them, and the answer is that we haven't been asked to assist them for that. that, that. So we are not contact tracing. Even though we have we, the person, we, we've identified the person. We right. are, we, I can't answer for the state what they're doing, but I will say because of Congress support, we are building enhanced capacity across this country to do contact tracing and get that capacity fully operationalized by the fall of this year when we're gonna need it to maintain containment as we get into the fall and winter of 2020. Let me take, let me have you look at this photograph. This is, I saw the, we saw the Ozark photo. This is the photo from last week's yeah. SpaceX launch. Yeah. People gathered on the bridge. Would you put yourself in these types of situations? I think the really important thing of all of this, as you pointed out, is the, not just to the individuals, but to the risk that they're putting the individuals they go home. And that's to. what's happening. That is what's happening. Let me just, do we have a vaccine yet? We have candidate vaccines under development. But we don't have one yet. We don't have one for deployment. Are we point. close to achieving herd immunity across the United States, yes or no? No. Is there any evidence the virus has become less contagious or is becoming tired of infecting us, yes no. or no? No. Okay. Are all the states meeting the basic tests that the White House guidance laid out for reopening? Downward trajectory? Uh, documented cases within a 14-day period, downward trajectory of positive tests within the 14-day period. Yeah, Chairwoman, of course, these were guidances that we put out. And, and to answer your question directly, not all the states have met those criteria. Okay. This nation is not only hearing a wake-up call, rather we're hearing a clamoring for equity and healing, for a positive permanent change to health and social disparities that persist in our nation. Preparedness will be critical. Uh, when influenza and COVID hits the doorsteps of our hospitals and healthcare providers this winter, I want to encourage all Americans to be prepared, embrace flu vaccination with confidence for the families, themselves, and communities. This single act will save lives. It isn't just health versus the economy, and I think, you know, it really is health versus health. I mean, I mentioned that 85% of children have now missed their immunizations. Around the world, 120 million kids have missed the immunization to measles. There's going to be more deaths from measles in children than there is going to be from flu. So it is trying to find that balance as we come back and be able to make sure that we can begin to operationalize uh, not only our employment, but our health system. I and mean, when you think of all the cancer screenings that have been missed that are going to have consequences. So I do think it's important 
to get back, you know, not only our economy back, but our health system back.